here for them to develop uh, the data stage tool. And after that, after completion of this tool and when it has been released to the market, it has been acquired, the VMA, uh, the entire has been acquired by the Informix. Actually, basically the info, Informix is uh, majorly for the uh, database company and it also, I mean, it, uh, it also purchased the data stage uh, from the uh, VMA. And after that, you know, after, uh, after the IBM has acquired the Informix, uh, the entire company, but it has left the uh, this data stage as separate and it has just took the database, Informix database. And after that, uh, this has been took by the orchestrate. Uh, it's also the one of the company. Yes, after that, uh, once again, you know, it, it has been taken by the IBM and it has renamed it as the essential data stage. Okay. And after that, I mean, after a few years, like in uh, 2001, it has been renamed to the WebSphere data stage. Again, the WebSphere is a, uh, from the family of the tools, like it contains a, uh, MQ, uh, many tools like that. After that, finally, it has been renamed to uh, InfoSphere Info Information Server. It belongs to now. Now, data stage is as part of the uh, InfoSphere Information Server. IIS, we call it as IIS data stage. Uh, basically, data stage is nothing but something like uh, it's one of the mediator between the two sources. Like for example, we'll be getting, uh, we'll be having the sources from different, uh, in different formats. Like our source may be, uh, uh, I mean, uh, some uh, books of the mainframes, or something like a notepads, or something like Excel sheets, and even some uh, something like Oracle RDBMS databases, and whatever it may be, the source. And our target will be our one data warehouse. Like it also, it's also the one of the table. And what we need to do is we need to combine all these sources and we need to load into our uh, final target using our data stage tool. Uh, so, uh, any doubts uh, here? No, go ahead. Okay, fine. I know if you have any doubts, you can stop me at any point, okay? Okay, thanks. Okay, thanks, Stephen. <coughs> uh, this is the major functionality here. Uh, and in between, uh, in between moving from this source to the target, our data stage uh, tool mainly do it will uh, the main job it is to do the transformations. A transformation is nothing like uh, nothing like uh, something like we'll be getting the data from different types of sources. Uh, it might be having a different type of uh, data types. And what we need to do is we need to uh, bring it to the common layout. Uh, are you on the first uh, slide? I'm, I can I can still see the first slide only. Yeah, yeah, it's it's on the first slide. Okay. I'm just explaining about the what the data stage uh, tool does. Okay. 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 You know right. our basic our as a data stage developer our basic concept or motto is to design the jobs in such a way that we need to transform the source data and we need to load into the target data. This transformation is nothing but the requirements which has been given by our client. The requirement that uh, the SDLs is something like that. The business analyst of of the client will be interacting with the data stage architect and the data stage architect will uh, get the details um, uh, get details of all the source systems and it will uh, he design something like architecture in such a way that uh, different tables like these tables uh, I mean uh, these are the source tables and it should go to this target table the transformation should be like that uh, this uh, the data stage architect will send this document uh, to the next levels and then I uh, know then as a developer what we need to do means we need to convert into the technical documents. Technical documents it's some it's something like it's more in detail about the technology like for example we need to uh, for example we need to do the data type uh, conversion or something like a date conversion or you know uh, for in this we have some different sources each different different sources contains a different types of uh, data date formats. We need to uh, we need to bring all these date formats into a, a single uh, Single format. So for that, we'll be using something like a transformer stage, for example. Uh, you know, what we need to uh, maintain everything in the uh, technical document. Like we are using this transformer. This transformer here, we are, we are using this function. I mean, uh, we need to uh, we need to document in detail, and after that, we need to design the code after the approvals. I think uh, you are very well aware of the SDLC, right, uh, Stephen? Yes. Yes. Okay, fine. No, this is the part of the uh, data stage developer. In data stage, you know, uh, we'll be performing the various operations like uh, a sorting or something like a, removing the duplicates of the source data and validating the data, something like using our aggregate functions like sum of maximum updates. And we'll be having the many operations, I mean, that we use in the uh, uh, RDBMS or uh, any data, any database uh, uh, functions. Uh, yes, I have used DB2. 
Okay, fine, fine. So you are aware of the debt DB2 and, and you have a, aware of Oracle? Yes, I, I know about Oracle. I have not worked in Oracle, but yeah. Okay, fine. The data stage, you know, uh, it's mainly the server, uh, mainly it will it has been installed on, on the Unix machines. I mean, most of them are in the Unix boxes and we'll be accessing them through our, uh, from the other, from other the operating system or, or any type of operating system. We'll be, uh, I'll show you the architecture. So the data stage, it will be, uh, you know, it's part of the IS. As I said, our data stage uh, will be a part of data, uh, IIS. IIS is nothing but, I'm repeating, uh, InfoSphere Information Server. It contains the different uh, different types of uh, tools. I mean, all our tools have been integrated in this platform. Uh, it is something like a client server, uh, client server architecture. We can see see here uh, the client, and this is all. Uh, this is all. In the, sorry. And this is in the server. It, it is the software which has been installed on the server. It contains majorly three: the services, a repository, and engine. Engine okay. is nothing but, I mean, uh, yes, Steven, do you have any doubts? No, I said yes. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. Okay, fine. No, the engine is the major part of the data stage. I mean, whatever the code we design, after that, when we click on the compile or the run button, uh, the, the, the next step, from the next steps, all it has been taken care by our data stage engine. And these are services and repository is nothing but, uh, I mean, these are all the separate things. I mean, the engine uses these services and repository for compiling and for, for example the services it supports for the different uh, for, for all the functions which has been designed in the data sheet for example when we compile our code the engine will contact the services for uh, some functions and it will contact the repository for the metadata metadata is nothing but something like a uh, table definition schemas all will store in this repository
Welcome to GoToMeeting, online meetings made easy. There are two other callers on the call. Parallel parallelism concepts. What happens here in what happens here means, for example, when when uh, for example we have as I said we have something like a 10,000 records. When we click on the run button of designing our code, what happens means you know uh, this 10,000 records have been uh, splitting into different. Welcome to GoToMeeting, online meetings made easy. There are two other callers on the call. Instead of waiting, uh, uh, instead of waiting the transformation of all the 10,000 records, it will uh, move the first 100 records, 1,000 records to the stage. I mean, it won't wait for complete staging of all the 10,000 records to transformer, and then it will transform. So again, it won't wait for uh, completion of all the transformation for all the 10,000 records, and then move to the uh, target. Uh, did you got uh, Steven? Yeah, I got it. Yeah. Now, yeah, this is nothing but the parallelism. You know, uh, IBM has been used the patented a parallelism concept. Uh, here we can have the two types of parallelism. Uh, one is uh, something like uh, pipeline parallelism. The second one is the partition parallelism. Pipeline parallelism is nothing but, as I said, you know, uh, it doesn't require. For example, see here. Uh, in the previous before implementing the before implementing the parallelism concept. Uh, so this is the disk, uh, you can think of something like this, the disk, it is our source system. It will be moving uh, to here and after the, after the first stage, again it, we should have some other database to store the data for this. After then, after completion of this entire transform, then we need to uh, start this enrich phase, mm -hmm. like a transformation, something like that. After mm -hmm. that again we need to run this, again, again we, need to come, we need to wait till all the rows has been processed, then we need to start the loading here. And finally it will be, okay. it will be moving to the target. But now, using the parallel pipeline parallelism, it won't wait for uh, I mean uh, wait for the loading of all the 10,000 records. But soon after we get the 100 records or something like 1,000 records, it will directly move to the next stage instead of waiting here. This is nothing but uh, parallel I mean pipeline parallelism. It is something like a pipeline from one stage to other stage. As soon as we receive the data, it might be a, a small 100 records or 20 records again. The second type is partitioning parallelism. As I said, you know, uh, as we have the 10,000 records. When we use the partitioning parallelism, it will partition our 10,000 uh, data uh, into, into something like a 10 uh, sets, like 1,000, 1,000, 1,000. It's again depends upon uh, the volume of the data and the uh, mechanism what we use or the, what we in the sense that what the de data state developer mentioned uh, uh, during the uh, job, I mean while designing the job. <coughs> something like, you know, it will partition in the data and it will be moving from part one part of the data to other part. And uh, IBM, uh, I mean, the, this data state engine takes care of all these things, and it will, uh, it will, it will be. We cannot see these things, but you know, uh, but we can observe uh, during the runtime. This is the pipeline parallelism. Uh, now, this after combining the pipeline and the partitioning parallelism. See, uh, see here, the partitioning has been here, has been done here into one, two, three, four sets. And after that, you know, here you can see something like a repartitioning. Repartitioning is nothing but, you know, for some of the operations we require the entire data. For example, uh, we are doing something like a lookup of one, one record in all the entire 10,000 uh, records. So at that time we require, I know, uh, we require all the entire 10,000 records. Why? Because uh, as we just, uh, I mean, we just uh, look in a small set, I mean, uh, we can, again, we don't meet our requirements. So at that time, the repartitioning will, does, will be occurring here for this for this type of operations. Again, this will be done, I mean, uh, by basing upon our, uh, our code, what we have been designed here. Yes, this is the pre-node partition, you know, uh, I said, you know, the partitioning will happen, you know, for example, uh, we have the three nodes, the, the node is nothing but a separate, uh, we can think it's something like a three separate uh, subsets, or we can say, uh, for example, uh, we are having some, uh, three, we, are, we are something like a four-tier architecture, we have three servers, we can think each so we can define each server as a one node, node one, node two, node three. In general, in all the production environments, in most of the clients, they go for the uh, four node configuration. It, it doesn't mean that they have the four servers. We can say that they have the two servers and they can define, they can divide their uh, disks into the two parts. One is they can and then they can define as a node one contains one part, node two contains the other part on the same server, and the second one will contain the other one. Uh, any doubts? Are still now, Steven? Yeah, I have one question. Uh, yeah, the partitioning, and if you go to the next slide. Yeah. 
uh, I understand the partitioning and the repartitioning concept, uh, okay. but the criteria, the criteria for partitioning and or and for repartitioning and where it will happen, all these are uh, designed by the developer. Yeah, yeah. One thing, yeah, the developer he just needs, you know, for partitioning we. Uh, the data stage uh, IBM provides the uh, something like a partitioning algorithms and collecting algorithm that the, the data stage developer you know uh, he just needs to mention mention what type of algorithm I mean what type of partitioning we need to do I mean we have for example for partitioning algorithms we have something like a uh, key based or keyless I mean something like a key based means something like hash partitioning modulus partitioning I mean depends I mean based upon a single column what we need to set but it is not I know if he doesn't know about I mean which partitioning we need to use uh, we have something like a partitioning mechanism auto. Auto is nothing but it, the data stage engine it, it will be automatically it will select the optimistic partitioning algorithm based upon the stage and based upon the uh, the volume of the data. I mean I mean we need not to I mean uh, care about this uh, partitioning all these things. Okay. Yes. Yeah, I mean it's part of the notes. I mean you are you got this node uh, con I mean, concept right? Yeah. Okay, fine. You know, this you see, yeah, this is the what I mean. When we design the job, I mean, we just these are nothing but the, uh, we can we'll be calling this as the stages. This is nothing but the join stage. This is the aggregator stage, which is used to perform some aggregations like group by by using the group by we can do some maximum of something. I mean, many aggregation functions will be as we uh, we can do using this stage. And this is the DB2 connector. This was Oracle connector. Here, this is the source. This Oracle uh, two tables are the source, and this is uh, we are moving into the one table and, says, and it is a DB2 uh, database. When we, I mean when we design it will be like that. When we run internally, you know, it will modify into these things. It will be uh, converted to like this. I mean we cannot see this, but you know, uh, the, by using this parallelism mechanism, it will run like uh, multiple instances. I mean uh, four instances here. Right. Got it. Uh, production environment, okay, it's fine. Uh, yes, configuration file. No configuration file is the one in which we define the nodes. Something like as I said, you know, uh, in client, I mean, major clients we use, are using the four client architecture. I mean, four nodes. Uh, you know, see, this is the sample file uh, we, which has been given here. Here, one n one is node n one name. I mean, whatever the name we can keep, it's nothing like that. Uh, just for understanding purpose, I just keep n one, n two, n three, n four. The first name is nothing but yes, the yes one, but nothing but you know. Uh, Name of the uh, data, uh, de I mean, uh, disk space or something like we can keep. Uh, we can say the uh, name of the server here. Four servers in the names of S1, S2, S3, S4. And you know, resource disk and resource. We have two types here. Uh, disk and scratch disk. Scratch disk is the per the main purpose is that I mean, we are saying to the data state, please use this slash m directory for a scratch purposes for a temporary purpose. Here. You know why? Because you know when we uh, run the jobs, I mean, it uses some buffer. Uh, it uses some buffer uh, memory, and we are we are at, I mean a buffer space. So we are saying to the data stage that use uh, please use this slash m directly for all these things. Okay. Okay. And this was this is the main disk. I mean for for all the operations. And uh, the configuration file is the one in which we need to be. I mean uh, by uh, by seeing this we can uh, we can say that our data stage architecture is a four node configuration or two node or one node something like that. And, you know, and these are all on Unix, right? Not in Unix. I mean, uh, you know, uh, the, it's, it is. We can see from Unix as well as our client. As I said, you know, uh, we have something like a data stage director, data stage the designer, and the data stage administrator. You no, know, we mostly right. I'm design saying the files. Well. Is, the yeah, files file are stored, stored in, all in uh, Unix, right? Yeah, file is stored in Unix, but we can see from our designer. Okay, got it. Yeah, now I will be, uh, will be explaining uh, partitioning and collecting and before that, you know, I will uh, just explain what happens when we execute a job, okay? Okay. Yeah, see, uh, when we design, you no, know, we will be just creating some two, we will drag and drop, uh, uh, no, we will drag and drop the icons and we will be keeping on our uh, canvas, I mean canvas and it will be like that. So what happens when we run, you know, when we click on the run, uh, run button, what it will happen to me, it will internally uh, create something like a ASH code. Hash code is nothing but something like a similar to the byte code, okay? <coughs> you know, hash code, you know, we have something like a, uh, uh, all the parallel, uh, yes, before that I need to say, we have something like a total three types of uh, jobs. One is the sequence server jobs, one is the parallel jobs, other one is the uh, sequence job. 
So our job since I have, has been divided, I mean, I mean, has been developed at 1995, as I said, it doesn't have the parallelism concept. So uh, right now we are nobody is using this server job, nobody is designing, but might be some of some of the clients using uh, which has been designed. I mean, uh, before this uh, IBM parallelism concept came. And the second set is the parallel job and parallel jobs. Parallel job is nothing but I know as in this all the uh, I mean parallelism concept, uh, it uses a parallelism concept. Now the other one is a sequence job. Sequence job is nothing but you know for one set. I mean, uh, we will be designing a, a parallel jobs. Uh, each parallel jobs contains some similar uh, one or two or three functions. After that, at the final stage, we need to combine all these uh, jobs and we need to create one sequence using the sequence job. So you got it right? Yeah. Okay. You know, uh, in parallel jobs, you know, we have again, you know, uh, we have one stage. It's not. It's a transformer stage. It has been developed using the C plus plus. Apart from this transformer, all the stages have been developed using the OR, OR script. OR is nothing but orchestrate scripting language. You can say like that. When we compile this job or execute this job, what it happens means all the stages will become uh, create some OR code in that side, which is almost equal to the bytecode. And you know, uh, if we are using the transformer, it will again create some I mean uh, object code, object code, and then after that it will create. No, it will be converting into the byte code. I know I'm, why I am saying this means I just want to let you know about the transformer. It has been designed using our C++ and you no, know, uh, most of the uh, best practices says that I use very as less as possible a transformer. Why? Because uh, it will uh, it will be it will be something like a over, overhead for a, a data stream engine. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Fine. And one more thing is you know uh, here we are able to see this uh, arrow map. You know, uh, when as I said, when we compile, uh, it will be generating the OR script. When we see that script, for each link, it has been uh, there will be some 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 virtual files will be created in background uh, for something for operations things. You know, we can uh, you know uh, in the next classes when we run, I can show this uh, script and I can show you what internally it happens. You know, uh, for for a developer, it doesn't require to uh, know all these things. But the thing is, uh, when we see in the performance issue, I mean, for example, we can use many stages. And we can we can uh, have uh, I mean uh, multiple ways to uh, multiple uh, ways to do a requirement. But the thing is, the developer needs to choose the best stage. Why? Because you know uh, at the development stage, we'll be having the less data. So, at whatever the way we use, I mean, it will be complete. It will be complete by within uh, some five or one 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 to two minutes. But the thing you know, if when it goes to the production, it will be having uh, will be using a uh, millions of data. At the time, it will be again a performance issue. So. So in order to uh, in order to uh, identify the which way is the optimistic way, we need to know all these this uh, all the script and we need to know what is a virtual file and where it will be created and what happens. You know when we run this, you know we'll be having something like a two operators will be create two or three operators will be creating. Uh, you know uh, if we design the job in in another way, it will create some like something like a three operator. So at the time we'll be using this or this or this way. Why? Because we are reducing the performance. I mean we are uh, reducing the uh, overhead here. Okay. Got it. Yes. Uh, I will uh, explain you about the uh, partitioning. Yeah, I said as I said that you know IBM provides us uh, the uh, partitioning algorithms and collecting algorithms. Partitioning is nothing but you know when uh, when we are uh, when we see when we scan from source side we are sending the data to the uh, transformer face in in a different uh, data. In a different set of partitions, so we'll be dividing uh, the data into the different sets using the partition algorithm. When we stand at the transforming side and we are uh, looking for the data, you know, uh, we will be receiving the data into the, in, in the form of different sets, and we need to collect it. It's a collect them. So for even for collecting, uh, we'll be having uh, the different type, different algorithms here. So, so that is the collecting algorithms. You got it right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Partition. Yes. Yeah, these are all the uh, partitioning algorithms. Are uh, you no know, round robin, random hash, modulus, entire same, and auto. Auto is nothing but, as I said, you know, IBM provides uh, uh, this partitioning mechanism. When we check, when we uh, use this, you know, by default it will be auto. If you know, uh, until unless, unless we know about the volume of the data and the type of operations we are doing, uh, I mean, we need not to. I mean, uh, when we know all these things, then we can go to, we can keep uh, on our own this partitioning algorithm. Otherwise, we can just keep it as auto, so that the engine takes care of all these things. Okay. Yeah, as I said, you know, uh, you know, part even this algorithm has been divided into two categories. One is uh, 
key based and the other one is a keyless something like I will this is a keyless 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 is nothing uh, while partitioning it doesn't use any key it will write it will be randomly moving for, I mean to the different nodes it will move uh, for example first third fourth record records might be in the first node other other side, the remaining some of the records in second node other some of the records might be in third node it doesn't use any key here so any doubts here uh, no, I'm, I'm good so far. Yeah. The next one is the same partition. Same partitioning algorithm is nothing but, uh, okay, I will explain this uh, later. Uh, you can understand, okay. Yes. The entire partitioning. As I said, you know, uh, and then before I said that, you know, when we, at the time of, I mean, after, at the time of explaining about the parallelism, I have been informed, you know, uh, sometimes we require the weak partitioning. Repartitioning, uh, you know, in, 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 for example, we are using the lookup stage for uh, performance of lookup operation. We require the data to be, uh, entire data to be in each and every node. Why? Because, you know, uh, we require while lookuping, uh, we need to uh, search entire 10,000 records for even for one record. At the time, we will use this entire partition. So, you got it right? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, next one is the hash partitioning. Hash partitioning is nothing but, uh, it's a key partitioning. It's based upon uh, some uh, some key keys, nothing but then we can keep uh, one of the column as a key here. Based upon that uh, key, and that this algorithm will work. The, uh, next one is uh, modulus. It is also same as as uh, same as uh, hash partitioning, but you know it takes something like it is uh, it will uh, perform uh, the performance wise. You know, modulus partitioning. We prefer the modulus partitioning. Uh, well, because it is, uh, this is faster than the hash partitioning. No, it, this is uh, yes. No, this is the logic of what this algorithm uh, uses. Partition equal to mod of key value. Key value is nothing but you know the the column which we are going to view uh, divided by partition number. Partition number uh, is nothing but we are using here. We are using, the example is for as a three nodes. So we think the this this value will be a three. Key value is nothing but the value which, I mean, uh, the value of the particular column. Yes, uh, other one is the DB2 partition. DB2 partition is nothing but it has been designed for the DB2 stage. You know, when we use the DB2 stage, uh, then we'll be using this uh, DB2 partition. Apart from that, we won't use that anyway. And one more partition is the same partition. Uh, yes. No, for example, you know, we got a scenario in, a, you know, uh, where we are using two lookups. Uh, one is uh, two lookups, uh, I mean one after another. You know first, you know for in first lookup we have given the entire partition, entire partitioning algorithm here, okay? Okay. You know, uh, now you know, you know we are in the second lookup stage, uh, in the second lookup stage. Again in order to, I mean, again instead of giving this partitioning uh, as the entire, I mean the entire, we can directly give the same partitioning algorithm. Same is nothing but it will just use us, uh, it will just retains the current distribution. Distribution was the current. I mean, uh, entire means all the records has been in, has been scattered in all uh, three nodes. So n one contains ten thousand records, n two, n three contains ten thousand records. If you use the same partitioning, I mean, again instead of partitioning again uh, using this the entire mechanism, it will again that the same data will be coming into the same nodes. So you got it right? Yeah. Yes. Right. See, even here you can see the icon here. This means, I mean, uh, the same set of data goes to the same number of nodes here. Yes. Yeah, this is a sample uh, one. You know, here this is something like a partitioning. Uh, I mean, uh, this is a partitioning symbol. See, you can see, you can observe here, this is collecting. It is getting data, it is being collected here. We will explain. Uh, Auto partition. It is auto partition. As I said, you know, data stage. Yeah, I mean, IBM has given this partition. Uh, whatever. Uh, I mean, if you don't know about uh, which partition we need to use at the time, we can uh, uh, use this auto partition mechanism. Yes, collector method. Collector method. These are the algorithms which are which we are using for collecting the data. Uh, auto. Okay, auto is fine. Anyhow, you know. Uh, round robin. Round robin is nothing but we yeah, again we are picking uh, records from the different sets, different uh, nodes into again R to R stage. Order is nothing but you know uh, it is nothing like first we are uh, getting all the data from the first node, after that from second node, after that from third node. 
a sort matrix you know, if we require the output i mean uh, while collecting we require while collecting uh, we require the data in a sorted uh, then we will be the first i mean in n1 we will be getting uh, sorted or data on the same n2 will be getting the sorted data n3 will be getting the sorted data we will be combining all the data i mean combining is possible we will be merging all the data here Yes, this is fine. Uh, my I will expect the data should be okay. okay. Yeah, so I said we have you know data stage which is contains the server engines and tab engines. Why? Because uh, I mean still some of the clients are using the server jobs for some operations. So so when we are compiling server uh, are running you know server engine takes care of these uh, server jobs and our tab engine takes care for, for all the parallel jobs. So types of jobs here, server jobs, parallel jobs and job sequences. <coughs> uh, you know, uh, I will explain, you know, why job sequences might be, will be, yes, I will explain with a simple example. Now, for example, you know, we are, uh, we are in a such environment that we will be receiving uh, some files, uh, some comma separator file, files from uh, this, from this uh, mainframe scheme, okay? Okay. And uh, the requirement is something like uh, there is something like uh, for each and every month the all the, uh, the entire monthly transaction should be come into on on a particular uh, server and a particular folder. So I think so from uh, from mainframe guys they will use some back programming and they will send the uh, file they will uh, extract all the data for entire month and they will they will send it to this uh, job. I mean they will send it to this uh, server uh, into a particular folder at that time. <coughs> And after that, you know, uh, one more thing is, uh, uh, what with that file, they will also send one uh, success file or some one control file. Control file is nothing but it contains the name of the file which they have sent, and it contains the number of records uh, of that particular file. Or well, this is the first one, and the, and the next thing, you know, from then, from then our data stage uh, job, I mean, from our data stage job should uh, should be uh, using these files, and it should be as as it is a comma separated files, it should be doing some. Uh, uh, transformations and it will be free. I mean, it will be calculating some amount, some paid amounts or something like that, and then it will be moving to uh, some other uh, data, some something like a DB2 target. This is our requirement. You know, our uh, job sequence. In job sequence, you know what we'll be doing means, you know, as the mainframe team, they have sent two files. We need to validate whether this file contains uh, the exact record count, uh, what what the file have, and we need to see the file name. So for that, we'll be designing one job. And we'll be creating the second job for all the transformations on the all, all the transactions. On third job, you know, we are uh, just we are just loading this data into our uh, our DB2 target. For this, we we have created the three parallel jobs. And you know, uh, we need to combine uh, with the sequence is something like first one, second one, third one, job one, job two, job two. What we need to mean? We'll be just creating the sequence job. And sequence job will be uh, drawing the, all the three jobs, and we'll be giving the links. So this is the purpose for the sequence job. So you got it right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you know, uh, do you have any doubts uh, till now, uh, Steven? Uh, no. Some of the concepts are like I am. I'm assuming you will go into deeper details in the actual course. So that's okay. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> but overall, I understand. Yeah, you overall, I mean, you understand about uh, what is data stage. So now you are able to, I mean, uh, like you are able to uh, say that what is data stage and why we are why we are using it. You know, right? Yes, yes. Yeah, uh, I will. Uh, I will explain one more thing. So you are able to see this PPT, right? Yeah. Fine, fine. Uh, so, uh, so you are aware about uh, what is data warehouse? What is uh, you all these things? No, not much. Okay, fine. It's not a problem. You know, uh, you know, uh, this is the uh, normal data what we will be seeing in files. You know, by seeing this, we cannot understand what this data is. And right. uh, what we need to do means we need to change into this information. I know we can. We can change by uh, by you know by giving the column names and it will become information. Here, uh, see, you can see that. Uh, 
uh, we will be calling this as a metadata. I mean, the, uh, nothing we know about the metadata. Data itself, data about the data. Uh, so this, this is uh, nothing but customer ID. So for customer ID, so customer ID is nothing but a metadata. And this, I know, uh, this is all the open. This, uh, you know, by seeing this, we can analyze. This is uh, this is what uh, this this column is customer ID. This is the date column. All these things we can uh, we can get. Uh, you no know, information. Whatever the maybe, whatever the information is maybe the data. Uh, might be the information be something like a text file, something like a CSV files, Excel files, whatever it may be. Uh, the data stays can handle uh, any type of sources. You know, even uh, even in the real time, most of the time, you know, nowadays uh, ERP is coming. Uh, you know, also data stage uh, supports uh, to extract the data from uh, different ERP uh, systems, like even from SAP, uh, SAP, SAS, uh, many things. Whatever it may be, it will be uh, collecting all the data from different sources, and it will transform and it will lose the target. <coughs> You no, know, we'll be uh, we'll be loading all the data into the R. You know about this RDBMS, all these things, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Why? Well, because you know, you are already working. No, okay. I mean, how many? Uh, what is the experience? I mean, uh, in, in year counts. Yeah, I have ten years of experience in DB2. So yeah, RDBMS, I understand okay, this. Okay. okay. Fine. 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 Yeah. So we can uh, we can skip this. Yes. Okay. You know what is OLTP and OLAP? Uh no. Yeah. Yeah, OLTP is nothing but I mean the general all this uh, I mean what all, all the uh, online transaction uh, processing system OLTP is nothing like that. You know, uh, for example, uh, wherever you know, even in banks, you know, they store only the particular uh, in their system. They will store only uh, something like a uh, six months data or uh, five months data or something like that. Why? Because uh, again, uh, I mean, uh, whatever if you store the more data and it will be again a performance issue for them. So what they will do means I mean uh, in their night times I mean using or uh, using the brain cells or something like that. They will move the data into the different uh, server as a data warehouse for their archiving purpose or something like that. Yeah, these are some some more uh, normal examples of OLTP system. Yes, uh, problems with OLTP is not for reporting. Uh, yes, it is for the daily processing. It's for it's for uh, not for reporting, not for analysis. No, it, uh, OLTP system is nothing. For example, uh, no, the major use of the data warehouse is nothing but you know. For example. Uh, it is mainly used for it's a higher level people in a company. For example, uh, we we can say for a CEO he wants the details. What happened? What are the uh, value? What are the what are the profits he got this year? And for example, uh, we can say uh, in a retail market uh, and the CEO he wants he wants to know wh what type of product has been gone this year. And you know based upon that he can uh, you know he can uh, he can provide to the stores in 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 a, the sufficient quantity for the next year, and he can also know uh, what type of whatever the product has been uh, uh, less. I mean, uh, I mean, less in stock for this year, and what what type of the product we are not able to produce at the produce to customers at the, at the correct time, something like that. He want to analyze all those things. You know, for that what he what we need, he need he needs the entire data. For example, for entire year's data. So uh, no, but he cannot store this entire data in a system. Why? Because he will be getting uh, for each and every day uh, the transactions might be very more. So the records might be very very more. So what happens? You know, uh, so different source. And one more, we can again we will be having different uh, scenarios. So for example, when we, when we see the retail, I know uh, we retail stores might be in a different states. So uh, I and so the they will be loading into a different table. So at the time what they can use. I mean, uh, the night time they some will they will be uh, getting they will be gathering all the data to a particular uh, data warehouse. Data warehouse, you know, by the name we can say it is something like a warehouse. It is something like a warehouse or board on which stores the all the data. Based okay. upon this data, we have uh, the reporting tools. I mean, this data warehouse been uh, integrated with uh, reporting tools. I mean, like a Cognos, uh, uh, business objects, CSAS, all these things. I mean, based upon uh, this data, they will create something like a universes. Universes is nothing but uh, universe is nothing but uh, designing uh, the tables for them, and they will uh, pull the data from this data, the, uh, this warehouse. You know, see here, we can see this. See, OLTP contains the entire detail. I mean, uh, detail thing. You see, uh, for each and every thing here. And after that, you know, finally, when we go to the data warehouse, it's very just summary for the entire uh, single day. This this product, this quantity, this price, this amount. It's very uh, it's something like aggregated view. I mean, it is not the thing, not the thing like we are uh, we are just sending this uh, aggregated one. 
we'll be sending entire data to our data warehouse based upon I mean what we can do some aggregation functions and then we can pull the records uh, in this format. And one more thing is you know uh, um, okay. Yes, this is the three. These are the three main concepts we need to. I mean, we need to remember or something like that. You know, uh, non-volatile. Non-volatile is nothing but uh, <coughs> non-volatile. You know, we we won't remove any uh, even a single record from our data warehouse. And the second okay. one is the time variant. I mean, uh, time variant is nothing but you know we can uh, get the data based upon our uh, our month and based upon either on month or either on week or either on year. Or something like a quarter, and whatever the uh, time we can do, we can extract the data further. Subject oriented. Uh, subject oriented is nothing but you know, for example, in a in for a for a client, uh, he might be having a different subject areas. Uh, for example, when we go to the healthcare, uh, he might be having a different uh, different areas. Something like, for example, he might be having a paid payable. I mean, he might be maintaining this. Uh, for example, even for the bank, we can take a customer has one subject area, accounts uh, has been one subject area for checks. For check payments, you can think. I mean, it depends upon his uh, data warehouse capacity. Got it. Okay. Fine. Yes, data mask. Data mask is nothing but you know, it's a very you can, uh, as I said, in a subject area, we can maintain uh, each, uh, a data mask for each and every uh, subject area. Data mask means nothing like we can say it is a small data warehouse. And after that, we'll be you know we will be having something like a two data types, one uh, two uh, types of data warehouse, uh, dependent and uh, independent. Or we can call you know, other other things is you know uh, first we'll be loading the data into the data maps. After then we can load it into the data warehouse. Okay. The other thing is first we'll be we'll be loading all the entire uh, the, uh, client data into a single data warehouse. Uh, after then we can divide it to it based upon our subject area. Okay. Yeah, this is the I mean this is the entire picture here. These are the different types of sources and uh, this is the ETL tool like where here, here data stays six here. You know we have I mean again we have different types of uh, uh, vendors here. I mean uh, many things in home data cabin issue, data stage, SSIS and this is the data warehouse. Data warehouse might be on any database. I mean nowadays uh, most clients are uh, I mean they are going preferring the teradata for that. The other, other one is the reporting. Reporting, we have again the many tools, so Cognos, Business Objects, Microsoft, SA, we have many number of uh, uh, tools, you know, OBI, many things. And one more thing is, you know, uh, ETL. ETL means uh, extraction, it will be transformation and loading. Extract is nothing but it will extract the sources, sources of data. It will uh, perform some transformations on the particular, on the data, and then loads to the data warehouse. Uh, you know, uh, there are uh, two types, you know, one is ETL, other one is the ELT. ELT means extracts, they will load into the data warehouse and then they will do the tra transformations. Uh, mostly, uh, mostly most of the clients goes to the ETL and you know nowadays some clients are going to ELT and you know what they will do means first they will load all their data into the uh, Teradata and the you know, Teradata will uh, is providing a many transformation sponsor uh, in the database. It will be there in the, using the transformation, uh, transformations there they will be doing this all the operations like aggregating all these things or something like removing duplicates all these things. So you got it right? Yeah. <coughs> yeah, uh, this is the uh, entire project life cycle. Uh, data profiling, data quality, uh, after that ETL, after that you know, MDM. MDM is maintaining the metadata. Now we are in this part data stage. This is a small example. Okay, we have given here ETL and ELT. Data extraction sources, CRP sources. Yes, this is these are the our client components. Other one is the server components. Designer, okay. director, administrator. Other one is the web console, server console. It's nothing but you know. Uh, using the web link, uh, they can uh, connect to the data stage. There is a sample screen while connecting to the uh, data stage administrator. Uh, you know, here we can uh, this is a sample screen. This is, admi this is the administrator's part. 
this is the designer window you know these are all as nothing but uh, parallel jobs you can you can you know the red color symbol is nothing but the parallel job for server jobs you will be having something like a green color yellow color symbol then. all the yellow colors are uh, server jobs red color are parallel jobs and for sequence job we will be having a green color for that this is the aggregator stage and this is the file i mean uh, this is the this is a sequential file stage this i yes, he is doing some transform uh, some aggregator of transformation here this is nothing but the director when we run we can uh, we can see all the things and you know all the operations here one by one i mean each and every step we can see here when we get any error so this green will be going to uh, to the red saying that aborted and it contains the error message and if we have any warnings we will be having something like a a warning symbol, yellow color symbol. We, uh, from when you open and you click on that, you can see that warning message. Based upon this, uh, we can uh, we can uh, we can uh, check our errors and we can uh, validate it. And one more uh, way is uh, we all we can also have the logs in our Unix uh, server. Uh, you know, based upon that log also, we can uh, do this uh, error handling. The same thing. Yeah, Steven, I am done with uh, today's content. Uh, so you know, do you have any doubts? You can ask me. Uh, no, at this point, I don't think I have any doubt. So you are comfortable with this uh, training, right? Uh, yes, so yes. One, uh, one more thing is, you know, uh, we require, you know, uh, data statements. The practice is uh, must, I mean, must ensure why? Because in each and every stage, we'll be having, uh, for example, when we, upon uh, when we are expecting the data from a source, it might be, I mean, we can, we can uh, expect the data might be in a comma separator or something like a. Now the field separator might be a different one, either comma or something like a colon, depends upon the source, you know. Uh, for example, now we are using the sequential file. In sequential file, we will be having a different uh, uh, different options, you know. Uh, we need to remember that. Uh, remember is nothing but when we do the practice, I know we will automatically we'll be remembering them. Not only for that, you know, even for, you know, uh, we require the practice uh, to remember them. So I just, you know, I just want to say that, I mean, practice is compulsory here. And if you want, you know, I can also give some scenarios to you, uh, you can also work it on them in your free time. Okay. Yeah, uh, that's all from my uh, side. If you have any notes, uh, you can ask me. Okay. Okay. Right now, I don't have anything. I will uh, respond back in email. Yeah, you know, I think, you know, uh, this organizer will be calling you, I mean, uh, for this, I think. Sorry? I mean, uh, the other management team, I think they'll be calling you for, uh, for all uh, things. For right, right. Things. Okay? Right, right. Yeah. Okay, thanks, Stephen, for joining. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Mm -hmm.